Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this wonderful Saturday night, October 21st. Goodness, almost November coming up here. It is about 11.19 p.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity looks like a uh, 3.4 earthquake occurring in the area of the Java Trench here within the last uh, 20 minutes or so in the red flag. Know some activity out here into the area of the Indian Ocean, 5.2 along the divergent boundary, right there in that triple point area. Let's go ahead and see what's going on out here across the USGS map as we look at the activity here. There's that 5.2 Indian Ocean triple point junction occurring. That's the uh, boundary, so to speak, of a couple different plates, including, well, let's go ahead and bring this up here, this uh, latest map. Out here between the Australia plate and um, the Antarctic plate, and it looks like the Africa plate area. It's going to be this area right around here. A little bit of uh, movement stirring up there in the last uh, couple hours or so. Don't see too much activity out here. Uh, on occasion, we do, but uh, let's see what we got for historical data. Yeah, it looks like we do on occasion here. Nothing spectacular, but as you can see, plate dynamics here following that plate boundary pretty nicely. All right, let's move on here. See what we got. A little bit of activity stirring up here outside of Nepal. That's a uh, 5.2. Been watching this area pretty closely here. Uh, this has been the middle ground between the weird activity here in western Afghanistan, the unusual activity out here in the west, and uh, the Izu Trench activity. This has kind of been the middle point, so to speak. And uh, this area definitely capable of producing some large damaging earthquakes. This is a major subduction zone here uh, in between the uh, area of uh, India. Uh, India plate and the Eurasia plate. You can see the subduction zone up here across the uh, area to the right side of your screen right here. This is where the uh, Himalaya mountains are. Major area and producing some uh, large sizable earthquakes. It's been uh, it's been a little while since we've seen any major mega earthquake activity out here. So we'll continue to watch that. A little bit of movement outside of the Iraq area into Iran. 4.0 earlier this morning it looks like 10 kilometers deep. The Atlantic Ocean pretty quiet aside from one little earthquake down here in the South Sandwich Trench. That's going to be a 4.9 in the last couple hours or so 29 kilometers deep roughly around the center area of that subduction zone region south america and the middle america trench have been pretty quite uh pretty active in terms of earthquake activity here in the last couple days a lot of activity stirring up here across the middle america trench uh, also the south america region seeing quite a bit of deeper earthquake activity uh, if look here on the earthquake 3d globe here uh, some shallower earthquake activity down there as well in that white ring. Looks like a 4.0. Uh, but it's been an area of active region uh, as far as earthquake activity here goes recently. Middle America Trench as well. Quite active along this area including quite a few upper fours. And uh, including a little swarming going on here off the coast of Guatemala and Mexico area. This is a little region to watch here because it is in a zone that can see some mega quakes out there. So keep an eye on the Middle America Trench here for some movement. Uh, the states here outside of Pecos, Texas. The latest one shows a 3.1 outside of Mentone. 6.4 kilometers deep. I think I know what's out there. Let's see what we got here for satellite data. Um, we got a quite a few oil fields out here. That's going to be these roads leading. You can't really say roads leading to nowhere because these roads are leading to gold, liquid gold, in terms of oil fields out here. There's quite a few to, quite a few wastewater disposal facilities. That's what these little ponds are out here. In western Texas, big time money maker out there in, in that area of the country, in the uh, outside the Pecos, Texas area. Uh, St. Helens, Mount St. Helens area. Seen uh, about seven earthquakes in the last 24 hours. Kind of watching this area pretty closely. It has been an area of interest. In terms of earthquake activity over the past, uh, I, technically, I think I would say over the past 45 days or so now. This is just the past 
30 days of all magnitudes. And we're noticing a little trend here of earthquake activity. This is nothing significant in terms of magnitudes, but multitude of earthquakes are looking uh, pretty active. 163 earthquakes here in the last 30 days of... Uh, on the map here, I, I do want to look here. I, I have to go. I have to do it. Custom, we're going to go 0 0.0. And we're going to go back here um, just the past couple months or so for Mount St. Helens. I just I kind of want to get a total tally of earthquake activity out here. Not, not out there. Let me get out of that real quick. remove draw <laughs> which one do i choose here uh goodness this thing's just stuck out here not for sure what's going on here i'm trying to remove everything out here but uh okay let's start over okay let's draw a rectangle on the map out here across mount st Helens area of washington because this activity is uh, definitely of of interest here uh, let's see what's going on out here across the area we got custom zero in above over the past, oh, I don't know, probably three months. Let's see what we got for a total tally. So, yeah, I knew it was a pretty good amount of earthquake activity. Uh, 256 earthquakes here since August of, uh, August of, I don't know what the date is I selected out there, but that, that's a lot of earthquake activity, isn't it? For a uh, volcano. So, uh, you know, I'm kind of curious as to what's going on out here underneath this volcano that's producing 253 earthquakes here in the last couple months. And you've seen the last 30 days or so, that's uh, 160 something earthquakes up here. Here's Mount St. Helens area again, last 30 days, all magnitudes. 170, well, about 166 earthquakes or so within this area. Of Mount St. Helens in the last 30 days. So that's a, that's a lot of earthquake activity occurring right smack dab at the summit area of Mount St. Helens. So uh, there hasn't been really any notification there from USGS with regards to the, uh, to the activity there around Mount St. Helens. They're just kind of, uh, I can't really use the word lollygagging because they're, they're, it doesn't really seem like they're concerned with the activity. Um, I know volcanoes, super volcanoes and such can see earthquake activity. But, uh, you know, it, to me, it seems like there's a little bit above uh, the typical movement out here across Mount St. Helens. So that's the latest seismograph station out there showing some of that activity around Mount St. Helens. The latest uh, gas emissions data here, gas monitoring stations across the Mount St. Helens area. Pretty quiet there on the carbon dioxide um, temperature decreases and increases there across the area of the summit. Hydrogen sulfide roughly uh, looks like we're noticing a little bit of spike here in the last couple days or so. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, and also the, uh, let's see, sulfur dioxide down here. We're kind of at a lower level right now. It does go through periods of uh, relative ups and downs uh, but for the most part looks like things are toning uh, toning down in that area of the uh, gas emissions uh, but uh, you know it's it's one of those things to just have to continue to watch and monitor and see how it plays out right cascades have been somewhat active here in earthquake activity here's mount rainier up here a couple earthquakes around there but for the most part the earthquake activity here across the cascades around the uh, Mount St. Helens area. All right, let's check out the West Coast area. Anything unusual going on? A handful of earthquakes out there across the West Coast for now. Uh, look at the 2.5 map and above. Shows one earthquake on the San Andreas Fault. That's going to be a 2.6 near the Ridgemark area. And also a 2.5 earlier, uh, just off the San Andreas Fault in the San Bernardino Mountains near Big Bear Lake, 2.5. Aside from that, mostly smaller earthquake activity out there today. Really no major swarms. Southern California, pretty quiet out here. This is uh, uh, below background activity for now. The Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, watching Kilauea Volcano. This has been up and down. 
In terms of earthquake activity, also inflation data. Latest activity shows quite a few earthquakes here across the southern edge of the summit. Kind of watching this. Earthquake activity uh, roughly between, uh, well, right around one to four kilometers below surface. Not a whole lot of migration up northward, though, towards the crater area. I think we're going to see reactivations of some fissures out here in the southern edge here of this volcano soon. Kind of watching that. Uh, the Australia area, of course, seeing a 4.8, originally uh, 5.0 there from the Australia government uh, geoscience agency. But USGS reporting that as a 4.8. A little bit of earthquake activity, aftershock activity. I'm surprised the USGS is reporting this. 3.5. In that same area, a few hours later, New Zealand, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on out there for now. As uh, far as earthquake activity goes, this continues to remain our quiet zone across the area. Uh, 4.1 into the Aleutian Trench, it looks like, within the last couple hours. Uh, let's see if we got anything major going on here. Looks like, for the most part, uh, earthquake activity kind of stretching up here across the Himalayas. Watch this region because this area is definitely capable of some uh, sizable earthquake activity. Uh, Indian Ocean, some divergent boundary activity showing elevated movement today across the Indian Ocean and the uh, South Pacific area. Uh, what do we got? 4.0 coming in here. Middle America Trench. What do you know? This is a pretty active area here in the last couple days. Uh, space weather activity, I wish I could say things are on the uptick, but they are not. Um, we are looking at uh, continued low flare category into the B flare category. And that's a little, uh, a little crazy, right? Considering this is solar maximum. Look at this. We're looking at the complete diminishing of sunspots out here on the visible, di uh, vi visible disc of the sun uh, a look around the eastern limb of the sun shows a little bright area out here but uh this is a uv filter ray uh, but it doesn't look like anything spectacular but we will continue to watch this this is by far one of the lowest um sunspot regions here far as you know the declining in earth in uh um, flare activity uh, I would say this year. I haven't seen it this low in this solar cycle uh, so far. So um, right now, 50% 50, 50 chance. Are we in solar minimum? 5% chance for an M-flare, X-flare. And proton event, pretty much wishful thinking. And as uh, far as auroras go, that's not going to happen for now. Uh, we'll continue to watch that, though, as the days advance. Right now, thunderstorm activity, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, there's not a whole lot going on out there. All right, we are looking at that low pressure system off the east coast here, continuing to get pushed off to the east and be replaced by some massive high pressure system out here uh, centered across the areas of the Great Lakes. Welcome to uh, some fall temperatures, maybe, not looking at anything heat wise far as summer temperatures but definitely above average out here uh west coast areas let me back up a little bit tomorrow here we're looking at some uh, rain chances and a little bit of cooler temperatures here in northern california that is going to be replaced by it looks like maybe a little clipper system up here in the pacific northwest and after that well your guess is as good as mine um there's a lot going on here far as the dynamics go in terms of El Nino, right? We're dealing with a major El Nino pattern, and that plays a major part in the weather out here across areas of the states. Right now, the main areas, we have to watch these main areas of pressure differences, and right now there's a major high pressure system over Alaska. These guys are probably not going to like this winter, should be warmer than average and less precipitation with the jet stream aiming right at California and Southern California, uh, which is very typical during a strong El Nino event. So we will watch that as we head into our wet winter years or a wet winter months here. Um, that should 
advance here and bring uh, wetter precipitation to the California area. That's just a fact. We've seen quite a few strong El Ninos have, over the year. And not every single one is the same, but uh, we do tend to see some very powerful storms hit the uh, West Coast area during those strong El Nino years. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Seismograph stations look pretty quiet for now. No unusual activity, no major swarms going on anywhere. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow. Enjoy your Saturday night, and uh, please stay safe out there. We'll catch you guys later.